Yesterday, the Japanese government widened the evacuation zones surrounding the melted-down Fukushima nuclear plant. More than 5,000 people left their homes on, on Sunday after being exposed to high levels of radiation. Last week, it was discovered that a nuclear meltdown did indeed occur inside reactor one at the plant, which has officials concerned about the status of the other more volatile reactors at the plant. There are currently over 3,000 tons of highly radioactive wastewater underneath reactor one that shouldn't be there. And Japanese uh, officials are scrambling to figure out a way to get it out of there. Recently on this show, renowned phys physicist Michio Kaku said this about the situation. A crippled nuclear power plant, it's stable only in the sense that a time bomb is also stable. A small earthquake, a pipe break could set it off because it's just hanging there by your fingernails. So imagine being on a cliff and hanging by your fingernails and one by one your fingernails start to crack. That's the situation at the reactor right now. It's stable. So what do these new developments mean for Japanese officials who are hoping to have the disaster contained in the coming months? Paul Gunter is the director of the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. He joins me now. Paul, welcome back. Thanks again, Tom. Good to see you. Um, we learned last week that a meltdown did occur, indeed, in Reactor 1. Uh, you had been saying that several weeks ago on this program, Absolutely. as I recall. Uh, did the Japanese just finally acknowledge it, or did they finally find the evidence of what they had acknowledged they expected? or? Uh, you know, what, uh, well, I think euphemistically the nuclear industry calls this operator optimism, where they keep holding out for hope when, in fact, the facts speak much louder. Uh, it happened at Three Mile Island. It happened at Chernobyl. Information is uh, the first thing to control when the reactors are out of control. Right. Yeah, of course, you know, PR at all costs. So cutting through the PR, you keep close tabs on these things around the world, around the United States, around the world, and you've been watching the Fukushima uh, reactors. What is the current status of what's going on at Fukushima? Well, right now, um, actually today, the Tokyo Electric Power Company admitted that all three reactors are in, uh, melted down. The first three. The first one, three, units, three. one, two, and three. We've got uh, the reactor uh, spent fuel pools in units one, two, and three, and four in complete shambles. Uh, so the radiation levels are rising now. Uh, where, Again? They were down well, for they, They've been spiking on and off. I think the clearest evidence is that the emergency planning zones are now expanded beyond 30 kilometers uh, in and around Fukushima. What we're actually watching right now uh, is an evacuation of uh, children and pregnant women beyond 30 kilometers. And uh, this is a surefire sign that the uh, permanent exclusion zones are going to grow now, even beyond the 20 kilometers that uh, they are the, today. The U.S. government, as I recall, had recommended 50 kilometers. Well, they, they actually recommended so, out to 50 miles. At 50 miles. And so right. are the Japanese moving in the direction of what our recommendations were a month ago? Absolutely. And this, weeks ago? This is the concern, is that, uh, you know, we're, we think that this is actually... Uh, bordering on criminal activity, to hold back information from a public, to order tens of thousands of Japanese to stay in their homes when we, when we knew that the reactors were melting down. You know, information was being deliberately withheld from the Japanese public and from the world for that matter, but more particularly for vulnerable populations. Um, you know, what, 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 this is a clear violation of human rights, that these people were not provided with a responsible government reaction, uh, even when the United States was ordering its own nationals to back off 50 miles away from this plant. Two contrasting stories, one in today's New York Times about how often there have been these warnings from, from engineers and whatnot that have been ignored. Uh, legal challenges that have been ignored from everything to the construction to the operation of nuclear power plants all over Japan. Um, and two, a couple of days ago, the Japanese government announced that the 50 percent nuclear uh, power goal that they had set for the year 2020 was being replaced with a 50 percent solar, wind, biomass, uh, renewable uh, goal. Um, it seems like kind of Bad news in retrospect, good news going forward. Are the Japanese learning from this? Absolutely, but it grieves us that it had come at the cost of so many uh, lives. The, the quality of uh, life for future generations um, in northern Japan is, has been sacrificed, clearly. Um, and it comes 
uh, too late for, for much of the Japanese economy and, and a large portion of the population. Uh, clearly, those of us who've been the uh, Cassandra voice in um, on, that renewables are the viable choice for the future, we're, we're happy to see this. But um, you You're know, happy to see the commitment we're to happy renewables, to see the not, not the meltdown. Absolutely. Meltdown. We're happy to see the commitment shift to renewable energy. Yeah. But again, it grieves us to, the, uh, to see it come at such a cost. Yeah, the cost of what ultimately may be thousands, tens of thousands of lives and the contamination I, of the ocean? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the figures are, are, you know, they're not really available right now because we're talking about consequences generations to come. Clearly what has happened is that this is uh, going to be a, a, a devastation of the Japanese uh, economy as well. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, there are many layers of, that this accent's playing out on. Paul, early on on this program, you and I talked about how, you know, so much of this water, they're, 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 they're sustaining these crippled reactors by just pumping water continuously into them, and they're like giant sieves, the water's going back out into the ocean. And how much radiation had been dumped into the ocean unintentionally, intentionally, uh, and how it's getting in the food chain. At what point can we expect to see radioactive seafood? Uh, could the Japanese expect to see it? And could we expect to see it starting to show up in the, in the larger organisms in the food chain? And is anything, and we just have a minute left, I'm sorry. And is there anything being done to, to look out for that uh, by the US government or the Japanese government? Well, right now, uh, the latest word is that uh, seaweed 40 miles off the coast of Japan is significantly contaminated. This is only an indicator that the concentrations of radioactivity in the oceans are biomagnifying. Unfortunately, what we're seeing here in the United States is that the Environmental Protection Agency, the Food and Drug Administration, and uh, NOAA are all backing away from and, and uh, bringing down the, the monitoring. So uh, milk, for example, we've gone to a schedule now of monitoring milk in the United States uh, for Fukushima radiation uh, every three months. Uh, rainwater is now being monitored only every month at, uh, in the United okay. States. So they're, they're actually downgrading the monitoring levels in the United States. Uh, and the uh, FDA... We're playing the three monkeys. Absolutely. The FDA has made the announcement last week that they're not going to monitor tuna and salmon for radioactivity out of the Pacific. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, Paul Gunter. Thanks again. Thanks for the great Indeed. work you're doing. Spreading the good word. Uh, this disaster has forced Japan to reconsider its future with nuclear power. They've reversed their decision to have nuclear account for half of all their energy production. Instead, they're going to rely on renewable sources like solar for that half. Germany, too, is ditching nuclear power with plans to close their last nuclear plant by 2020 and jumping headfirst into solar power, an energy source with which they lead the world at the moment. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., we're still using expensive and dirty nuclear and dirty coal and imported oil and natural gas from fracking, which pollutes wells and groundwater, with no plans to stop any of this anytime soon. It's time for a new energy policy in the United States. We just have to kick the fossil fuel billionaires and their shills out of politics first. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission says it has halted 24-hour monitoring of the Fukushima plant as conditions are slowly stabilizing there. The commission said on Monday that it was adjusting its response as Japan continues to implement a plan to bring the plant under control. But it said a U.S. team of experts in Japan will remain in place and it will continue to support them and coordinate response efforts with federal and industry partners. Meanwhile, the State Department says that based on studies, it believes it is safe for U.S. citizens in Japan to use bullet trains and expressways to transit through a 50-mile or 80-kilometer radius of the Fukushima plant, but it is continuing to recommend that U.S. citizens avoid entering the area. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says workers may have manually shut down the number one reactor's emergency cooling system, which had stopped before the tsunami struck. The government has instructed the operator to report on the matter by next Monday. Tokyo Electric Power Company disclosed on Monday records of its operations at the plant from the time the earthquake struck on March 11th until the tsunami hit and power was lost. The records show that the number one reactor automatically halted operations after the quake and then an emergency cooling system was activated at 2.52 p.m. But it says the system stopped about 10 minutes later 
and remained off for about three hours until after the tsunami hit. TEPCO says plant workers may have manually shut down the system in order to prevent damage to the reactor because the pressure inside the reactor had dropped sharply. The system is designed to cool the reactor even if all external sources of power are lost, but the records show that it did not fully function. TEPCO continued to say until its news conference on midnight of March 11th that the number one reactor's cooling system was operating. The chief cabinet secretary urged TEPCO to present a detailed account of the facts and developments. I learned about the possible manual shutdown in Tuesday's news reports. The government's nuclear safety agency has asked TEPCO to make a detailed analysis and report on the matter. Edano said TEPCO will be asked to publicize all its findings. Japan's cabinet has approved revi revisions to key policies including energy which has placed significance on nuclear power. In a meeting on Tuesday, the cabinet drew up guidelines for various key policies following the massive earthquake and nuclear disaster. Under the plan, the new growth strategy panel is to resume meetings by the end of May and present a strategy for Japan's revival by the end of the year. The meetings have been suspended since the disaster. The state energy policy, which, in, which places nuclear power as a key pillar, is to be reviewed. The government will also reconsider plans promoting exports of infrastructure such as nuclear power, high-speed trains, tap water and sewage facilities. Discussions are to be held on ways to promote investment in Japan. This includes efforts to overcome adverse sales of Japanese products in other countries due to unfounded fears of radiation. However, the cabinet has put off a decision on whether Japan should join negotiations on the Trans-Pacific Partnership or TPP free trade talks. Until recently, it had planned to reach a decision by June. Tea growers in Ibaraki Prefecture, south of the Fukushima plant, have halted shipments of tea after radioactive substances were found in their products. On Monday, the prefectural government asked the two towns of Daigo and Sakai and their cooperatives to halt all shipments of tea leaves. Daigo is about 100 kilometers from the troubled Fukushima plant and Sakai about 180 kilometers. Daigo is home to some 300 tea growing farms and 37 tea processing plants. May is the most important month for them, and their income for the month usually accounts for up to 80% of their annual total. It's really sad. We want to know how the radioactive substance cesium accumulated on the tea buds. We also have to ask Tokyo Electric, who runs the power plant, and the state to compensate us. The Environment Ministry says it will take three years to dispose of the massive amounts of debris left by the disaster in northeastern Japan. The ministry has asked local governments that have not been affected by the disaster to accept some of the debris because the volume is so huge that municipalities in affected areas cannot handle it. 346 municipal governments across the country have so far accepted the request. Under a guideline drawn up by the ministry, debris left in residential areas will be moved to temporary disposal sites by the end of August and will be either burned or buried by the end of March next year. Debris in non-residential areas will be moved to the temporary dumping sites by the end of next March and disposed of by the end of March 2014. One of the biggest issues is where to store the large amount of radioactive water from the troubled nuclear plant. A giant storage barge to hold the water has arrived at a port near the plant. Megafloat the mega float, 136 meters long and 46 meters wide, can store up to 10,000 tons of water. The floating structure entered the Onahama port in Iwaki City, south of the nuclear plant, on Tuesday morning. After some final checks, it will be moved to a site off the coast of the stricken nuclear plant.